I really do you want me to do the intro or do you want to do the intro shop? Oh, I'll what? do the I'll do the intro. I'm just checking something really quick. Okay. Beat uh, my energy. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Adventures and Initiatives One-Shot Special, The Tower of Heroes! How was that? That's perfect. <laughs> That's fucking beautiful, Shop. Welcome, guys. I am today's DM, the one, the only, the sadly individual Shop Goblin. And joining me today, I have... Go from top to bottom, guys. I am Windiest Hale, playing uh, Bramble Boomer Bumble. I am I Snap Cla yeah, Plastic, playing Ectos Coilbone. Swallow before you speak. Uh, <laughs> I am Donna the Cleric, and I am playing Karen, the uh, dra <laughs> the dragon, so the human dragon, the thingy sorcerer. I don't know. This is the first time that I'm doing sorcery. So. Dragon ancestry. Fucking give me a break. Ancestry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am Stealthy Stormy, and I am playing the shiny Kenku rogue cleric named Shiny. <laughs> and I am the drunken monk playing the high sun elf paladin Silphorin. I love how the oh. drunken monk was the most eloquent out of all of us. <laughs> because he's purposely enunciating, so you can't tell he's been having two beers already. <laughs> no, no, no. Pre-game for this. I don't drink while little monk is around. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's let's get you guys started with your setting. A wind is blowing across the ocean into the mouth of a river, feeding into a fjord in the Imdal Valley. It passes over the first walls of the great city of Ankhmor. Cities docks full of ships and trade and bustling with noise. Goes down roads and alleys and eventually blows against the door to the ancient Ankhmor Adventurers Guild, where inside, Silphorin is the first to arrive at the door to the meeting hall slash tavern for the guild having gotten an emergency summons from the guildmaster. Shortly behind him is Karen and Shiny. <laughs> Karen so. busts open the door and says, All right, what do you need me here for? I drop the door the is off. currently locked. Well, fuck it. I'm <laughs> do you need to shut up there, Karen? <laughs> A small yes. view slit in the door slides back, and you can see the eyes of the large half-orc bartender of the guild, Ranmuff. And you hear through the door his gruff grumble. Wait for the rest, then knock three times and we'll let you in. And then it slams back closed, and you can hear his steps receding. A few... Do you guys have anything to say to each other, or are you just waiting? Go ahead. Matt, this is my weekend away from the kids, and I'm having to do this. Fuck it. Shiny says, wait for the rest, then knock three times. Complete and fucking bullshit. <laughs> I'm going to sit Suck down it. and uh, pull out uh, my mace and start uh, polishing it with a rag. All right. Uh, after a few, minute, few minutes, both Ekthos and Bramble Boomer Bumble uh, join you in the hallway. All of you received the same emergency summons, just telling you to grab what gear you had available and make your way to the entrance to the guild meeting hall and tap. Uh, Bramble removes his, uh, his hat, placing it over uh, his left chest and le bows to the group. And Good afternoon, my colleagues. It is wonderful to see you all again today. Now, how many do we need? Oh, what a gentleman. 
Uh, Bramble, go ahead and uh, roll a uh, intelligence check for me. Okay. While Bramble's doing that, Ekthos is wiping something. It, it's a dark, gooey liquid from his glove onto his traveling coat, muttering to himself and really annoyed. Sulfur so looks at you in disgust. Thirteen. Bramble, you would remember from the message that there are only five summoned. They were very specific about that. Glance around, there's five? Yes, yes. I'll reach out. <laughs> They're not done. All five of you are present. <laughs> oh, I Karen see. knocks with her staff onto the door. It's like, hey! Hey! We're here! Hurry up! <laughs> Fucking... <sighs> Shetty walks us to the door. Very loudly. Uh, as you guys knock three times, as instructed, the door <laughs> swings open, and sitting at a table adjacent to the bar, you see the guild master, a older man in armor with a shield and sword leaned up against the stool he's sitting on, uh, bearing the symbol of the guild as well as the symbol of the god Bahamut. He turns as you enter, a stein in his hand, and a combination of depression and fear on his face. Exos casts well? Mage Hand and retrieves a bottle of uh, mead from behind the bar and carries it over to his hand and begins drinking. Uh, before it even goes past the bar, it is grabbed by Rathsum, the half-orc bartender, who glares at you. Just... I flick uh, a gold coin at him, and then... <laughs> no, 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 he's not even releasing it. Dang, damn it. Let's but see. Uh, roll... This chittering mute noise of amusement. Like roll a, a wisdom game. check for me, Ekthos. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you remember how? <laughs> Uh, space, space between the R. And completely spell out roll. No, you can do it with just an R. You just have a space between oh. the R and the D. You fucking kidding me? Nope. The things you know. Natural 20. Good first roll of the campaign. Well, second roll of the campaign. Shut up. Um, <laughs> I muted myself because I was like cursing this. Rothmus. He looks at you, and it, he's obviously trying to scare the shit out of you like he did when you first walked in here, a weak need level one adventurer. And he just shakes his head as it's obvious that you're not intimidated and just puts the bottle back on the shelf and points at the guild master who shakes his head at this and goes, It had to be you, Five. No drinking, we got work to do. I would be drinking on the beach right now if it wasn't for this shit. Shut up, Karen. <laughs> Look, you're the only five of high enough rank that we have available. Everybody at your rank or higher is gone off dealing with the orc invasion. But you five all are still here, and unfortunately for you, I need your, your help. Um... Do you know what the Tower of Heroes is? Would we? Uh, anybody that wants to, anybody that wants to, can roll a history check. Oh, yeah. Rather low DC. I am um, proficient. <laughs> Damn it, drunk! <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a second. Our uh, first five. Uh, dirty 20. Wunderbar. Space between the R and the dice. I think it's six. Yeah. Oh, shit. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 19 for Shiny. Dirty 20 for Bramble. Five for Slepharon. 17 for 17. Karen. Ekthos, are you rolling? Invalid input. <laughs> Please pass in the value of the dice. Arr, one second. 
<laughs> Actually, I'm just gonna pull out a flask and start drinking. I don't really care. I'm really okay. Right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anybody that rolled above a ten, so three of you, um, you would know that the Tower of Heroes was initially built by the three founding members of the guild. That it was for about 200 to 250 years used as part of the guild initiation. And then for about 50 years was no longer used but was guarded and now has pretty much been abandoned for the last 150 to 200 years. Okay. Well, of course, then we would know the Tower of Heroes, sir. It's an important mark in the history of our guild. It's more than that, but you'll find out. <laughs> Look, there's... um. There's a situation there. We've gotten word from the surrounding area of large clouds, red glowing lightning around the tower, um, and we need to send you to investigate. Now, unfortunately, it will take you days to get there, and it doesn't appear that there's that much time, so you will be teleported by myself. And, unfortunately, with everybody else having gone, they... Uh, kind of cleared out the magic items vault. So you only have a few items to pick from, which I'm going to drop into uh, in-game info. Question. Were we supposed to buy potions and stuff like that before game? Uh, no. You guys okay. will be given some as part of this. Okay. Good to know. Just want to check. <laughs> Like, you totally could have, but it was not a requirement. Alright, so I just have 1,200 gold. I'm a happy rich bitch. <laughs> like I said, you guys, that literally is your character's life savings. So, uh... Oh no, my husband paid me that. Ex-husband, actually. With the ooze daggers? <laughs> you... Okay, so he, uh, he... Uh, waves a hand at Rothfusson. I think I keep changing his name. And they bring out one, two, six, seven, eight. is what I wrote down. I really hope that's right. <laughs> I've changed his name three times, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, no good for taking notes. Of proper yeah, he brings out. Uh, he brings out seven items. Um, the plush, the ring, a dagger case holding two okra jelly daggers, the cloak. The Avatar Sword Hilt, Archivist spectacle, Spectacles, and the Whip of Grasping. These... Like reach out and grasp the Whip of Grasping. These are all we can offer you. Um, if you survive, you may keep them if you so choose. They, uh... They are, uh, all we have. Divvy them up among yourselves. While you do that, I will arrange for some potions. Question. Shop. Yes. Yeah. Um, are you the type of DM to let two resistances stack to immunity? Uh, how do you mean? Like, like a, because of my an item dragon? giving you an item giving you resistance, and then a uh, like natural ability. Yeah, like my have a natural ability to be resistant to cold damage. Um, I would say no. Um, for for something that's abilities that give you that. Uh, and then an item that gives you it, I would say those wouldn't stack. You'd pick one or the other. Damn. Okay. Um, if it was like... Yeah, no. With, with resistances, I, I wouldn't let those stack to immunity. Thought I'd ask. No worries. Um, so yeah, go ahead and divvy those up really quick. And then also, each of you can add... Uh, let me pull up the thing, and then I will tell you what you can add. Uh, so... Talk amongst yourselves. I really want that whip. I just reach out and take the whip. <laughs> I want the sword. I guess I'll take the glasses. I can already deal with the thing of the coat. <laughs> Not really my style, but whatever. I reach out and take the ring of the rodent and start inspecting it. Okay, so that leaves the cloak, the okra jelly ooze daggers, and the plush of warmth. Hmm. 
Has everyone taken something? No. Uh, Bramble will go over and pick up the uh, plush of warmth and uh, kind of tuck it into uh, his uh, vest. And each of you... Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Everybody has something. The cloak and daggers are the only things not taken, and those are extra items. You can, you're can, you still going to take them with you. It's just one of you has to carry them. I'll take the daggers, too. Okay, so that's two okra jelly daggers. Everybody can add two greater healing potions, which is the uh, 4d4 plus 4. So you each get two of those. And then uh, whoever takes the cloak, just note it down. I'll take the cloak. Why not? It looks pretty. <laughs> I take off my worn, dirty traveling coat, and you just see like two big wings unfurl and flutter a little bit. And then I throw the cloak over me, and the wings kind of fold back onto my back. Okay. Ugh. All right. Uh, once all the magic items are selected and your potions are handed out, he directs you, please stand close together and I will send you to the base of the tower. Be careful. Glory. It is said that the lightning can be erratic. So, erratic? Erratic. Yes. Erratic. Red, red lightning caused by whatever ritual appears to be uh, going on on the roof of the tower. Seems fine. <sighs> Who was it that said, don't touch me? Is that Karen? Great. Just great. Let's get this done. Fuck. Come on. <laughs> Do we touch them? Okay, uh, are you guys all gathered up then? Sure. <laughs> all right, he starts his incantation, and after a moment, you blink and then are standing in a wooded clearing at the base of a 250 foot tall tower of square stone, 45 feet on a side. Above you, the clouds are dark and roiling. In the city where you just were, it was a clear, sunny day. Now, because of the clouds, it is almost like twilight. And you see streaks of red lightning flashing through them. And on one side of the tower, you see one come down and hit a small tree. And it, instead of bursting into flames, explodes into splinters. Nice. In front of you um, is the entrance to the tower, a tall pair of double doors. Is there <laughs> thunder coming from it, or is it just lightning? Just lightning. There is no thunder. Uh, roll a perception check for me, anybody that wants to. Sure. Check my shit. <sighs> Ooh, uh, 19 plus God five. damn it, why does it fucking do that? Uh, it may be if you're not holding it down long enough or if your finger's slipping. And um, just no, so you know, uh, Snap, if you, uh, if you put a plus and then the modifier, it'll just add that automatically for you. Oh. Yeah. Man, my teacher was right. I would never use that math. Anyway. Dirty 20 <laughs> for Karen. <laughs> Okay, uh, and please remember to call out your roles for the audio of the recording, since a lot of people just listen to this for oh. some reason. I'm sorry. I rolled a 13. For some reason, we're entertaining as fuck. Well, right <laughs> now, you're crackly as fuck. It's not okay. even his campaign, and we're still at the mercy of his defective equipment. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're good, we're good. Um, okay, so, Ekthos, Shiny, and Karen... Uh, <laughs> actually, Shiny, you wouldn't hear this, um, but Ekthos and Karen, you both pick up what sounds like chanting and very kind of muffled moans. Um, you know, sounds like, but just very muffled and uh, a distant chanting as though somebody is performing, as you were told, a ritual. Uh, the is doors it coming of from the top of the building. Yes. 
uh, with your roll, you would know that it is coming from above you. Okay. Far, Do far above you. Do we know what language you. it's in? Karen's going to say it's uh, a what fucking language is, just having an orgy. What languages do you guys speak, uh, Karen um, and Ekthos? I speak common Infernal. and Draconic. Infernal and Common. Ekthos, you would recognize a few words, and Karen, you would recognize a few words. It is a mixture of Infernal, Draconic, and some other languages. Ekthos begins arguing with Karen about what they're saying, and both of them are wrong. <laughs> You guys, you guys would both know that there's. You're just catching snippets, and it's like, it's like listening down a long hallway. So it's you know parts of words, but it's enough that you can identify some of them as each language. Um, the doors to the tower stand before you. Uh, Anon, or fuck, I'm I'm looking at the wrong page, but um, B- Bramble's going to um, look over at the group, kind of hear they're arguing about seeing something. Look up to the top of the tower. And then start casting uh, uh, clairvoyance hmm. um, to Dude. see what's going on up at the top. Okay, give me one second to pull it up so I know what you're doing. Yeah, of course. That's really kind of range. Okay. How far is the top of the? He said 250 feet. Range is about. Yeah, no, it's it's within range, and uh, just for the, the recording, uh, clairvoyance, you create an invisible center sensor within range, which is one mile, in a location familiar to you, a place you have visited or seen before, or in an obvious location that is unfamiliar to you, such as behind a door, around a corner, or in a grove of trees. The sensor remains in place for the duration, and it can't be attacked or otherwise interacted with. When you yeah. cast the spell, you choose seeing or hearing. You can use the chosen sense through the sensors as long as if you were in the space. As your action, you can switch between seeing and hearing. A creature that can see the sensor, such as a creature benefiting from seeing invisibility or true sight, sees a luminous, intangible orb around the si- about the size of your fist. Yep. And... So he's casting it, uh, kind of... Above and you have your bardic focus, so good. One more time. I was just I was reading the little note, but you have your bardic focus, so it's good. Yeah, I do. Question: Are we already attuned to our items that we were given? Yes. Um, Any that require attunement, you guys would uh, have been given the opportunity to do that, but I don't think any of the ones I gave you require it. Uh, Mine does. Okay. Um, Assume an hour. Packed weapon. Uh, that takes an hour for a packed weapon. For Pact of the Blade? Uh, yes. You would have been given an hour while the potions were procured for you. Oh yeah, how many potions did we get? Two greater healing potions. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, can Karen see anybody up there? Uh, from where you are on the ground? No. Uh, Bramble, are you using seeing or hearing with the sensor? Uh, I am using seeing. And then are you placing it inside the parapet wall of the tower or just, like, on top of it? So as close to, like, so can I tell if it's roofed? Because I want to, like, be either in, or how to phrase this? I want to be just inside uh, the very topmost floor, looking okay. into what the top from, room will be doing. So from what you can see of the tower... The roof has a parapet wall as though it is a guard tower that someone would stand on. There is no visible roofing above that, but you can see that that seems to be where the light of this uh, apparent okay. ritual is coming from. Okay, so being able to tell it's roofless, he would obviously place it in a spot where he could see what's going on up top. Okay, so uh, though you cannot hear anything, you, do, uh, you are um, able to see directly in front of you what appears to be a large blue runic circle surrounding a red pentacle diagram, like uh, an alchemical pentacle diagram, and a very kind of dried out husk of a halfling standing with a large book in his hand, reading and chanting. Around the top of this tower, you also see uh, one, two, Four, what appear to be undead. Um, hmm. Are you proficient in Arcana? 
Um, uh, just a second. I am not, but I do have jack of all trades, so I can add half of my proficiency bonus to Arcana. Um, you can roll an Arcana check. Anybody? Are you describing what you're seeing to the group? Yes, of course. Anybody okay, who is proficient I'll, in I'll Arcana roll. can also roll. Okay. Uh, I'll roll what as you? Well. The undead that you see are three. They're they seem to be relatively Ooh. recently undead. Very That's nice, natural nice 20. twenty for Karen. Um, Fuck yeah, Karen's a bad bitch. All right. <laughs> uh, they seem to be relatively recently undead, like only a few months worth of rot. So there's you know kind of sloughing off skin and bones showing through. Very uh, kind of nasty armor where you can see fluids and things have just stained it, and it's got cuts and rips um, for three of them. Then you see another, uh, the fourth one is more in, like, caster's robes, um, and once again, seems relatively recently undead. Uh, okay, so, uh, I got a dirty 20 on that uh, Arcana check. Perfect. So both you and Karen would know that what you are looking at are Dread Warriors and a Deathlock White. Okay. Ooh. Repeating that to the remainder of the group. Yeah. Uh, so am I. Um, am I... Would I know, like, the stats for for them? <laughs> no. Probably not. Okay. You, you would know um, of them. They're not common undead. Um, in fact, they haven't exactly been used by any necromancers the guild has dealt with, as far as you know, for about four centuries. Okay. Awesome. Another hey. question. Can mm -hmm. I, with the help of the bard and his description of where they are, being that I have Spell Sniper, I'd like to shoot them with a Firebolt. <laughs> uh, what is the range on Firebolt? So, the range is 120 feet, but with Spell Sniper, I double that. 240 feet you still wouldn't reach. Damn it! I thought you said it. Especially, uh, especially not at a diagonal. Um, Shiny, you were going to say something? Yes, I was going to ask, is there a way for me to ascertain which of us is the least stealthy? Um... Roll a perception check. And is anybody trying to hide their lack of stealthiness? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Well, I mean... Oh. 12. Good question. That's wonderful. 12. Um, as far as you can tell, everybody seems to be relatively okay. The paladin might um, be a small issue considering his heavy armor. Alrighty, so... Uh, I believe you're wearing heavy armor, right, Drunk? Chainmail. Yeah, so that would be the only thing that you can determine. Um, yeah, again, there seems to be more lightning starting to come down. Um, um, let's get inside before the lightning strikes my yeah, chain yeah. mail. Right, Ramble. Uh, oh. All right, all right, all right. All right. On the go ahead, paladin, says, I'm going to assume that the paladin is the least stealthiest of us. I'm going to go ahead and apply, uh, give him my blessing of the trickster. Okay, how long does that last? Oh, that didn't last. I want to say eight hours. Let me go check that. Okay, and then um, Bramble, are you still looking through the sensor? Um, he would have switched to hearing to see if he can figure it out. Uh, what languages do you speak? Uh, common, Sylvan, and Primordial. Okay, uh, you are also picking up, now hearing this, some of what he's saying, the halfling necromancer, is in Primordial. And uh, before you swapped over to hearing, mm -hmm. you did see his eyes looking directly at the sensor. Like, he had raised his vision and was staring directly at it. Hmm. So it's less for an hour, or until I use this feature again. Okay. Um, can I get a dexterity saving throw from the party? God damn it, Bramble. That is a 12. This is a party check, so you guys are all um, together on God. it. God! Uh, I rolled a nine. Okay, so... 
Oh, wow, wow. 12, 7, 11, 19, and 13. Okay. We're dead. One uh, shot's over, on. you guys. We're dead. <laughs> you're not dead. Trust me, you're not dead. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So a bolt of lightning does strike directly beside the group. Uh, and Ekthos, Karen, and uh, Sylpharen, you take five damage from the rocks that it's actually throwing up. Um, yeah. That's, that's Damn it, I told you we should get inside! Uh, let's start moving towards the tower. I agree. <laughs> yes. Uh, when you reach the doors, they open easily at your touch, and all of you have your guild medallion, you feel it warm up for a second against your skin as you pass through the doorway. Hmm. Um, once inside, the doors do swing closed, and you hear them lock behind you. You are now in a 45 by 45, actually no, 45 by 35 foot room. Another door directly across from you on, so if the you enter through the south wall, on the north wall is a large doorway. Uh, a large doorway with three shields hanging on it, uh, interspersed across its vertical length. On the east wall of the room is a large rack filled with more shields. On the west wall is a series of shelves and racks filled with books and scrolls. Uh, across the floor are a few piles of armor and weapons that are old and rusted. And on the wall to either side of the door you entered are a set of large uh, hangings, wall hangings. Do we recognize any of the things on the wall hangings? Are they just decorative like pictures? Um, of they seem to be a story of some kind looking at them they seem to go through a tale uh, about a group of warriors um if you'd like to look closer you would have to do a uh perception or investigation check or a history check no would, it's fine. i'll do a history check would i have understood anything that they were talking about uh when i switched over no the only thing you were hearing was the um the halfling necromancer's voice um, as he was chanting, and more primordial seemed to come into the chant as he was staring at the censor, but other than that, uh, it was just a mixture of multiple languages in at least what appeared to you to be nonsense. Okay. Um, but yeah, you guys can investigate, search, and look around the room as you like. Are Ooh. there any couples on the ground? I can roll that again because of the glasses. See if I get a 20. Yeah, go ahead and you're rolling with advantage, yeah. Um, there don't oh, appear to be better. any... Ooh, nice. There don't appear to be any stones on the ground, Snap. Um, it's mostly just piles of older armor and weapons. Okay. okay. Um, and the doorway across from you... Oh, go ahead, Drunk. Drunk. I'm going to take a look around the room, uh, investigate the room a little bit. Uh, any specific section or just a general investigation? investigation? Just a general investigation. I want to see if anything looks out of the ordinary. I mean... <laughs> uh, I didn't find anything. No, no, you didn't. Uh, nothing seems to jump out beyond what was just initially seen. Uh, what did you say we were investigating, Shiny? Uh, I'm just making like a general investigation to actually no, I'm gonna okay. investigate the shields. The rack of shields or the shields on the door? Shields on the door. Okay. So on the door, you actually don't just notice the shields. Uh you notice that they are interspersed in it looks like eight spots where shields would be hung on this door. And the three that are there, um, <clears throat> Oh, come on, I had a place where I said this. Uh, the, out of the eight spots, in the top left is a shield with half of a house sigil on it in the form of a rampant lion. 
the middle top left, so the next one down, is another shield with a half of a house sigil that is three stars. And in the bottom right uh, section, there is a third shield with a half of a house sigil with a wood cutting axe. Um, like I said, there are the other five spaces that appear empty. And around the edge of the door, you see an inscription. Uh, what languages do you speak? I'm an Aryan. Say that again. Common and Aryan. Okay. Um, you actually wouldn't understand what language the uh, the inscription is in. I'm gonna point out the description. The inscription. To anybody else can go. Does anyone understand what this is? This is a bunch of gibberish to me. I walk, I up, walk next up next day. I will, I will too. I speak uh, uh, Elvish, Celestial, and Infernal. I speak Draconic, but yeah, you know. Sylpharin, <laughs> um, you would recognize this as Elvish. It says, Fair. Uh, if I can speak English. <laughs> it says, Four pairs a party formed, four houses on shields born. Paired sigils shall pass thee on. I'm going to go over and inspect okay. the pile of shields. And I'm going to put <laughs> that in the in-game info for you. Yes, what it actually is. Can I know what the history was on those, on those banners, please? Uh, yes. I forgot you rolled really well for that. Uh, <laughs> 25. So, uh, this, combined with your previous role about the history of the Tower of Heroes actually tells you that these banners are recollecting the first meeting and first adventures of the party whose final three members ended up founding the guild. Um, from what you can gather, it appears that there were four pairs of them, each coming from a different noble house, and that the four pairs uh, formed their party, and on the shields, you see the symbols on the door. Um, only some of the shields are visible on the hangings, but on one you do see a pair of shields standing next to each other. Um, the warrior stand, uh, the pair of warriors um, standing seem to have a pair of shields with a feathered wing and an upright sword on them, and they seem to be a pair that match together. Okay, I will relay that to the party. Um, is there any other doors in this room? Just the large door in front of you. Okay, so I would have relayed what it says to the rest of the party. Yeah. Um, and everybody remembers what's in the room, or would you like me to read? Shields, like weapons banders, right? weapons, armor, rusty, and yeah. Shelves and racks of books and scrolls as well, and uh, random oh. trinkets like chalices and such. Um, can I investigate the books and scrolls? Yes, you can. Go ahead and roll me an investigation check. Okay, give me a second. And I'd like to investigate the shields for the, those sigils. For the two that he found? Uh, for any, any more shields, any more sigils that we can find. All of the shields on the large rack, essentially one wall is taken up by an entire rack of just rows of shields. All of Damn. them have a variety of symbols on them. Go ahead, um, whichever one of you wants to roll investigation, Ekthos or Sylpharin, uh, rolls with advantage because of the help of the other. Uh, Sylpharin, what's your bonus to investigation? <laughs> Plus six. <laughs> you, I will give you advantage. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I think I'll go. Uh, I'll make the investigation roll. How's that sound? <laughs> you guys are good. You're good. Um, okay, and you were looking at the scrolls, Dono, and the books. Yes. Um, Damn it, nothing. <laughs> nothing is jumping out to you um, about the scrolls or the books as it is. Uh, with Can a I make 14, my own separate investigation on the shields? Uh, if you'd like. I was going to say, with a 14, Silpharin does find 
the uh, feathered wing and upright sword shields. Oh, nice. So then we need to do the thing that uh, the banners show up, right? Like, place them together. <laughs> um, so you guys, you're all smart enough to be able to figure out, kind of looking at what you've been told and what you got from the banners and the shields. Um, it would appear that you need to pair up the two halves of the house sigils, and there is only one section of the door the um, uh, the middle bottom, so not the very bottom, but the next one up, there are no shields in that slot, so best you could tell, the two you found need to go there. Okay, then I'll help to let them know where to put each shield from what I saw on the banners and from what I know of the history. So it's yeah. set correctly. Shiny, you were rolling for another um, another look at the shields. Uh, you don't see any more that seem to make sense for the ones that are on the door. As Silpharon and Karen and Ekthos fit the two shields you found, you hear a loud click as if a lock has come open on the inside of the door. Nice. Aha. Nice. Uh -huh. Karen's a bad bitch. We need to find the rest <laughs> of these. So feel free to do history checks, investigation checks, all that. Okay. I'm so there was a click. Please talk one at a time. Sorry. So there was a click that we heard? Yeah. Can uh, you... I determine where the click came from? Inside the door. Inside the door? The door that we just came out of? No, the door that the shields are on. Oh, so there's another door. I asked. Yeah, what, what I there said was... there's the door you came in and the door with. <laughs> you just cut out. Uh, there's the door you guys entered from, and directly across from it on the north wall is the door where you have the shields. Oh, okay. Then I misheard that. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> I, I wasn't clear enough. Um, You're good. Okay, yeah, I'm going to so... make an investigation roll in the room looking for more of these uh, shields. Uh, uh, which section are you looking at? The rack of books and scrolls, the shelf with all the trinkets on it, or the piles of armor and weaponry? I'm going to go for the piles of armor and weaponry. Okay, go ahead and roll for me. And then, can uh, you try and um, open the door? That just you, had the click? You can try and push against it. Um, okay, um, I'm okay. just going to gently try and like just mess with it. See if it loosens or whatever. It doesn't budge. Okay. okay. So there's probably more pins to it then. Um, you find out of the piles of armor and weapons, um, drunk, you find a gorget from a set of armor. If you know what that is, it's essentially a piece of armor that goes around the neck with a crest symbol on it, but only half the crest filled in. Um, The crest symbol is a coiled snake. And on the other side, it looks like something like an axe or something struck against it um, and damaged the other symbol. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. And then where are you investigating, Shiny? Um, just trying to think. That's a nine. Um, roll me one more perception check looking at the door. There you go. Critical hit. Boom! Um, it immediately clicks for you. The coiled snake seems to be opposite of the one remaining bit of the other side of the shield is a lion's paw. That's, uh, it's still up on the wall already? Or the door already? The the rampant lion is on the top left corner of the door. I'm going to walk over there and fit this with it. <laughs> um, the gorget itself it, it doesn't it's not a shield. The gorget, the gorget, is, gorget a, is a piece of neck armor, but it has the symbol of the house, the house on, it. on it. Ah, okay. okay so yeah. I, need to find, I know what we're I'll, looking for. I'll look for the shield yeah. then. <laughs> okay. Same as Karen. Karen will do the same thing. Oh, what are you doing? I'm not that okay, smart, and apparently. 
Shiny, you find it uh, very quickly in the pile of shields, the racks of Never shields. Never mind. Uh, Bramble <laughs> is just is over to the me. side uh, painting you all. <laughs> nice. Being quite entertaining. Does he get um, my good side? <laughs> I, Bramble, roll me a performance check. <laughs> oh, hold up. And then, uh, Shiny, once you find the shield, you easily fit it into the door on the top right side, and you hear another loud click from inside the door of a lock coming open. We are kicking ass. <laughs> uh, you guys now have the uh, 14. middle... 14? Uh, you look a little bitchy, Karen. <laughs> So it was my good side. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, you guys now have the middle top and the very bottom left to uh, to find. Time to investigate the trinkets. I, I um, sure. I want to walk over here to see like what trinkets. doing. Please talk one at a time, guys. <laughs> uh, um, what were you saying, Shiny? I want to go see Bramble's drawing. <laughs> you you can go and see it, and Bramble can tell you what it looks like. Uh, you're looking at the trinkets, Silfarin? Silfarin? Yes, I am looking at the trinkets with okay, an 18. Okay. You find an old brass chalice, um, kind of like an old trophy-looking thing, and carved into the surface is a house sigil on the right side of the sigil, you recognize the wood cutting axe, and on the left side of the sigil is a sheaf of wheat. Does anybody know what a sheaf of wheat is? It's from Sons uh, of Catan, and you trade it to get brick. But it's <laughs> it's actually a thing. It's a bundle of wheat. Um, so yeah, you Does just found say it's a bundle of wheat <laughs> because sheaf fits the setting. Thank you. All right, All right grammar, grammar hey, you whatever. See. Hey, Karen, have you seen anything like this over there? Uh, Karen, roll me an investigation check of the shields. Uh, Ekthos or Bramble or Shiny, are you guys doing any okay. other? Ekthos no, I... is sitting in the middle of the floor. He's uh, casting Find Familiar to pull out a little cute owl. Uh, that takes an hour. Never mind. <laughs> well, you know, That's a five from Karen. She doesn't even want to touch them damn shields. They're resting um, you kind of push at a couple of them, but they're very heavy dirty and kind of rusty so you don't really want to like get your nails damaged because you just got yeah. them done because it was supposed to be your weekend <laughs> yeah. the kids, you were dropping them with your ex Harold and his you know Fuck. young bitchy new wife yeah. Fuck Harold. <laughs> okay I'm gonna go investigate the shield okay and then uh is anybody <laughs> else doing anything else I will go that's a plus eight. nine but after uh -huh. investigating hold on hold on Go ahead, and Ekthos. Uh, someone already checked out the bookcase filled with scrolls and stuff, right? They didn't yeah, but it was find fail. anything. I'm I got like an 11. Track. And then um, Silfarin, it takes a while. Um, you kind of just, you know, step around Karen, just like, fine, I'll take care of it. And it takes a while for you, but you eventually find the shield you're looking for and fit it into the door. Um, uh, no, as soon as I find the shield, I'm a slam it into Karen's arms, uh, sit down, and pull out some water immediate and soap and immediately start scrubbing my hands. <laughs> Karen, are you going to fit it into the door? Fine. Whatever. Fucking men can't lie on them doing anything. <clears throat> Once it's fit into the door, again, you hear a click as the lock comes undone and the door opens. Or sorry, Yay! when the lock comes undone, the door has not opened because you still have to do the Fuck. middle top, <laughs> which has a shield of three stars on it, and then the other side is empty. I, I got a 12 for investigating the bookshelf. Um, okay, so you do find a scroll. Uh, it shows the sigil. It's kind of like the, the ink was scuffed at some point and wiped a little bit. Um, and it appears to show the three stars with the other side being a five-pointed sun. I tell no one. No, I'm joking. Uh, I go ahead and <laughs> hold up the scroll and say, hey, I think we're looking for something like this. Just I'll look for it. The, the sun. Yes, please do. I'm not touching that filth again. That's no nice thing to say about Karen. 
Not even what's going to happen. Oh, I'm not touching you want to fight, you. pretty boy? <laughs> Um, I, I mentioned to Karen, Karen, you realize that the sooner we get done with this, the sooner we can get back to day drinking. Natural one. Um, so, yeah. Well, if any of you guys were good at investigating, maybe we'd get done quicker. Yeah, if any so, of you guys were good at investigating, maybe we'd get done quicker. Shiny. Um, I'm guessing that was in, like, pure mimic tone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you do not find a five-pointed star or five-pointed sun shield. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'll... Do what does she find instead? She doesn't <laughs> find one. That's it. She just doesn't find one. Okay. Uh, so Farron stands up, looks reluctantly over at the shields again, and starts digging through it for an 18. So it's a rack of shields, so think close rack. It's not a pile. Oh, no. I start... Uh, <laughs> Are you flipping the through the shields? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to find a record. Kind of like, you know, those, those, uh, mag or those uh, poster racks at Walmart? Yeah, I'm just flipping them around until I find the one I want. You also don't five find a five-pointed sun. Uh-oh, guys, it's not here. Um, what is everybody's insight? Like, who has proficiency in insight? Well, I was just wondering if uh, Bramble could look up and cast uh, Dancing Lights and then send a few in there to see if this it's just light that it's with. I have a light cantrip. So you, you can cast Dancing Lights and send it up against the door where the shield is supposed to fit? Yeah. You have lights dancing on a on a door. It does nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks um, great, does anybody have proficiency in insight? I do. I do. Shiny, roll me an insight check. <laughs> so Farron's gonna sit back down and start scrubbing his hands again. God. Oh my god! Oh, shiny. <laughs> no, definitely. There's got to be a shield in there somewhere. Um, Anybody I'm else can feel free to roll an insight check at this point. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! There we go! <laughs> I got a 16 on my insight check. I don't like this at all. For anybody listening to this later, the last five rolls have been Shiny rolls a 1 looking for the shield, Silpharon rolled an 18 looking for the shield, and then Shiny and Ekthos both rolled 1s looking for uh, trying to insight I apparently got this. a natural 20. Uh, you didn't put D in there. It just does the number otherwise. But it still rolled it. <laughs> Don't be Karen, Karen. Um, it's so Silpharin. Silpharin. Uh, after not really having funny. found the shield, and everybody else doesn't seem to be able to find it, you look at the scroll Ekthos found again, and you can tell from the smudges no, no, 30, that the sun might not have five points. It might have been smudges calling the causing the five points. Karen, looking at the scroll, you also realize the same thing that this looks like an incorrect uh, guess of it being a five pointed sun. Upon realizing, yeah, my glasses that, would have told me that. Sorry. Upon my glasses told me that. Sorry, go ahead, Dono. I said my glasses would have told me that because <laughs> I have, I can read things and figure shit out quicker. Right. It's just a drawing. Oh, There's no writing with it. Ah, so you okay, actually could have read the uh, the inscription on the door as well. Okay, yeah, yeah so I could have. My upon realizing that, uh, Sofern would uh, ponder if he would have uh, seen something that would just be a sun or something that looked similar without the smudges on it. You did see a three pointed sun shield. I'm gonna dig through the shields for that. All right. You find it very quickly, because you remember exactly where it is. Here, take this dirty thing! And I toss it at uh, who's closest to the door. Ekthos will use Mage Hand and catches it, and then places it on the door with Mage Hand. Uh, you hear the final lock click, and the door swings open. Uh, behind, okay. you see a set of stairs um, leading upwards to the next level of the tower. 
Exorcist then uses Mage Hand to wipe whatever was on the shield onto Karen's back. <clears throat> <laughs> you users are disgusting. Karen uses Mage Hand to slap him in the face. <laughs> just smiles because he's used to it. Okay. Wow, that took an hour, guys. <laughs> <laughs> to get through the first puzzle and the intro area. <laughs> hey, hey, that's not bad. That's honestly not bad. You guys have done worse. That's, that's, I was going to say, it's better than us. <laughs> um, we had an okay, hour-long okay. ramble the other, uh, what was it, yesterday, because Dono's equipment couldn't work. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> no, um, okay, so you guys have now, uh, are you going up the stairs to the next level? Yeah. No, we're going to stay we'll... right here and have a bonfire and make oh, marshmallows. Uh, Rumble quickly collects his things and starts walking up the stairs. And Jess will also follow Bramble. Um, Bramble, Bramble, you're good. Okay, uh, as you guys reach the next floor, the stairs come out. Uh, the floor below seemed to have been made out of the same dark stone as the rest of the tower. As you step into the second floor uh, up at the top of these stairs, you see a room of white stone, uh, like white marble, and there are eight plinths set in a semicircle, and across the way from where you entered is yet another door. Uh, the eight plinths, the semicircle is facing towards that. On the door is another lock that has three indentations on it. Um, on each of the plinths is a statue of different types of stone representing a different uh, thing. And as the last member of the party steps inside, a voice speaks out of the air and says, Eight went out to quest to fight the evil paired. Three rode back alive, founders before their cairn. And I will put Did you just say my name? <laughs> For those of us that are not educated, a cairn is a burial space of stones. Hey guys. Yes, I am a salty bitch. <laughs> Your Next DM's a dick. Oh, Welcome to the game. Rips. Yep. Um, <laughs> Karen, with your uh, previous history checks about the guild you would know that this is speaking of the founders, the three founders of the guild, and their other five party members. Um, they were a party of eight that went out to fight a pair of necromancers, uh, which you recall from the histories. And only three of them survived the battles over the years. And before they died of old age, they founded the guild of adventurers in the city of Ankhmore. All right. I relay that to the group. Um, yeah, so there's the eight statuettes on the eight plinths and the three indentations on the door. Uh, do the statuettes have different, like, shaped bases? Like, is one a circle, one's a triangle? All the bases are the same. Each statue appears to be of a different individual, and they're each made of different stone. Would you like is to there... take a closer look? How many statuettes are there? Eight, I would eight. like to take a closer look. I would also like to take a closer look. Can As I you... history check to know which ones are the three three remaining alive members? Uh, that's the fun bit. It's been 400 years, and nobody remembers the names of these individuals. They're just the founding heroes, let alone what they looked like. Okay, so they never did a painting? Of what they looked like, or legends passed down of how they survived mm -hmm. each fight. Nothing. No, go ahead and uh, roll me a history check, and uh, we'll see if maybe you've seen a painting or read an, an old book or an epic or something. Um, the guys that are looking at the statues, you see uh, going from left to right, and I have these numbered. Number one, an onyx statue of what appears to be a fighter holding a sword. Number two, a Howlite statue of a cleric with a holy symbol. And I'm going to give you guys references of what all these stones look like. 13. 16. All right, give me one second. Um, 
a Howlite statue of a cleric with a holy symbol. Number three, a Rose Quartz statue of a monk with a staff. Number four, a Sodalite statue of a paladin with a shield. Number five, an Opal statue of a hooded wizard. Number six, a Malachite statue of a rogue with a pair of daggers. Number seven, a Lapis Lazuli statue of a ranger with a bow. And number eight, a turquoise statue of a bard with a lute. And I'm putting references of each of these into the thing. Um, game info. Yeah, so uh, in game info, from the top, the first one is Howlite. The second one is... Uh, yeah, pull up my thing. The second one is Lapis Lazuli, third is Malachite, then Onyx, Opal, Rose Quartz, Sodalite, and Turquoise. All right. Um, and then, um, Bramble, you rolled a 13. Yeah. Okay, you would know that one of the founders uh, from an epic you heard about him training others of his class, you would know that one of the founders was a fighter. Okay, so, and I get no advantage to this being of uh, Bard of Valor, where uh, fighting and heroism and epicness is kind of my entire thing. That's the whole reason you've known of him, um, is because he specifically made it his goal to train fighters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Inspect the lock. Um, does uh, does he uh, yeah, go know? ahead and roll me an investigation or perception check of the indentation shiny. Um, Does Karen know all this stuff? <laughs> With her you history know, checks? You know kind of the basics. Um, you don't you wouldn't know the specific members based on the previous checks. If you want to roll another history check, you can. Sure, why not? Do I have do I have advantage on that? Because of my thing, I can't remember. Uh, no, I believe it gives you advantage on history and uh, perception. Oh, and check. Your dice roller hates me. Uh, Arcana, Arcana and history, history checks yep. you have advantage, yeah. Nice. Um, okay. 10. So, uh, was that investigation or perception? Um, investigation. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, you can't see any discernible things on the, uh, the indentations that would tell you which statues are supposed to slide into them. Make a separate per uh, perception check. Okay. You may make a separate perception check. Karen, Karen got a, a 25. With a 25, um, you're remembering the last part of the hangings from downstairs seem to show the fighter and a bard and a ranger standing okay. over five graves. Here we go. And I would know the uh, different types of classes within the whole the thing. These are easily identifiable on statues where you can know, okay, that's a bard, that's a ranger, that's a this, this, and okay. this. Um, um, do I know what to do in this situation? One second. Let me answer, uh, tell Shiny. Um, Shiny, with a 22 perception, looking closer at, or is that investigation or perception? Perception. Thank you. Uh, with a closer look at the three indentations, you notice that two of them seem to have scratches and chips from two types of stone, one being onyx and one being turquoise. So the fighter statue and the bard statue appear to fit into these two indentations from what you can tell. Cool. <clears throat> Alrighty, guys. So we need the fighter statues and the bard statues fit on this lock. Ekthos will okay. take his mage hand and put the fighter statue to where Shiny said the fighter statue needs to go. Karen mm. will do her mage hand to do the one statues to whatever it needs to go. The, hell. Um, the one statue? What statue? Uh, so he did fighter, so I'll do ranger. Okay, How so you're going to pick up the... I'm going to take lapis, two steps backwards. You're going to pick up the lapis lazuli statue and slide it into the slot. Which slot? Are you talking to me? Yeah, there are two slots remaining. Shiny okay. indicated one for the fighter and one for the... And the, the fighter bard? has been slid in place. So I'll do the one that she didn't indicate for the bard. You mean for the ranger? 
There are three indentations. So, three indentations. She pointed out that two of them have markings that show which statues go in them. Okay. Because there's bits the of stone. fighter and the left. bard, right? Yeah. Okay, so the one that she didn't indicate that was... Like, the one that she didn't, I would know that that was uh, the ranger. Yeah, you can infer that that's the ranger. That is what I'm saying, is that I'm putting the ranger there. Good. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then whoever's anybody... going to do the bard, put bard. Who's putting the bard in? Hand the bard. <laughs> I don't know I why you guys are mage there, handing. And I, like, these the are... and I put the bard in there. Oh. Motherfucker. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you had the ranger, you put the ranger in. Okay, fine. Because <laughs> you said you picked up the ranger statue. I know, but I got tired of waiting. I'm Karen. I'm an impatient bitch. Okay? <laughs> uh... <laughs> you know, um... By the way, guys, these are all, like, miraculously shiny and clean. Like, this whole room, you can't see a speck of dust. What are the That's other ones? Nice. Let's get done with uh, this. So all, all three of them are in place. Are you asking what the other five were? I just want to pocket the opal one. <laughs> These are like 12-inch statues, so you got a bag with you, I'm guessing? A backpack? That's part of my equipment. <laughs> okay, so uh, you pick up the opal statue of a hooded wizard and put it in your pack. Um, as the bard is fitted into its indentation, the lock on the door vanishes and the doors swing inward, revealing another set of stairs. <sighs> more, more stairs? <sighs> Shut up, Karen. Let's go. <laughs> Fuck off, you clean freak. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually right, pretty good. Right. Actually, uh, <laughs> wait till everyone else is upstairs and tap Shiny on the shoulder and say, you should really put that back. We don't want to get in too much trouble. Quietly, I should have stealthed it. Um, oh, I, you, are, this is my... Gonna... I like it. it it's, it's beautiful. Um, are you guys both still <laughs> in the room? Yeah. Now I'm scared. Now I'm running up the stairs. I did my thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Are you guys in the room still when you're saying that? And Shiny, are you checking your bag or just going to like look at it and then keep going? Uh, like, are, am I checking if it's still in my bag? or? Yeah. Like, are you looking at it like considering what he's saying or are you just leaving it? No, I'm looking at it. And then... It's gone. Oh, it's gone. They, they disappeared. And as you look around the room, the other statues have also vanished. To put out this very sad, trilling, chirping noise and slightly walk out of the room. I really I want to. You, you. That was very big of you. Good job putting that back. And then I'm going to walk <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you guys reach the next floor, again, it is a square room that appears to be filled with nothing other than a giant stele and made of the dark stone of the tower. On the northwest corner of the ceiling and the southeast corner of the ceiling, you can see two trapped doors with large locks against them and the ladders raised up flat against the ceiling. The ladders raised up, like, can they slide down? Or are they, like, tied up? Uh, they are... So if you think of like a ladder that swings down, they are currently flat against the ceiling, but if they swung down, you'd be able to climb them up to the trap door. I pull off my cloak, spread my wings, fly up, and try and pull one of the ladders down. Roll a strength check for me. Do they seem to be tied up at all? No. Why are there so many gifts in the dice roller? They're just there? Because people are putting them in the wrong place. Oh, they're in the dice roller? Yeah, you guys are in the dice <laughs> roller right now. No, they're oh, in the no, right one. They're, they're in the right, they're the right one. Share it with everyone. <laughs> General. All right, never mind. I'm good. I feel no guilt. Okay. Um, roll me a strength check, Ekthos. 18. It doesn't budge. That's a 16. Oh, no, wait. You have a plus two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using an iPad, and to get to the plus symbol is a <sighs> So mental math for the win. No worries. Yeah, the ladders do not move uh, when you try and pull on them. Uh, I'm just going to start doing some pull-ups. 
get swole. Is anybody going to look at the big ass stele in the middle of the room? Sure. sure. Karen will look at it. What are you <laughs> rolling for, Silfarin? Uh, I just said I was looking at it with a 10. Okay. I You must have cut out because I didn't hear you say it. Sorry. Um, so once you guys look at it, you see that it on so it's a square stele on three sides is nothing that's a dirty on, 20 perfect on mm -hmm. the front is an indentation or three sets of indentations stacked on top of each other and what appear to be wheels that have writing on them in these three indentations uh looking at them you see the first one says seven houses three warriors the second one says 22 dragons, and the third one says 12 coopers. 7, 3, 22, and 12? Karen, um, I'd say with your previous history checks, this looks like something like it's supposed to be the simplest form of the story of the heroes, but it is very, very wrong. Okay, then Karen, because she is like this, will fix it in what way that she like would probably do by turning it. All right, so you're going to turn one of the wheels? Well, she's going to try and, like, she'll explain, like, hey, this shit's wrong, let's fix it. <laughs> okay, so what are you trying to do? Um, like, actively, so physically do it. So, so there's let me three wheels... That have the writing on them. Okay. So, so I will fix the wheels to be what is correct. So I'll turn the wheels to what is the actual correct saying and what is the correct numbers to the things. Okay. Uh, roll me a d12. Okay. Just a straight d12. To seven. Okay. Oh, that was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. Uh. Okay. Um. It takes about ten minutes because of how stiff these wheels are to locate the correct answers. And then uh, once you have them all correct, you see they say four houses, eight warriors, two necromancers, three founders. And as each of these wheels were fitted to the correct position, first the ladders lowered, then one of the two locks on the Trapdoors opened, and the second of the two locks on the trapdoors opened as the third one entered. So now the ladders are lowered, and the lo locks on the trapdoors are gone. Hey, look, guys, awesome. I did it! Hey, <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> I'm the one that did it! <laughs> Angel Boy can't do shit! <laughs> I'm queen bitch in this place. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Karen's being a badass right now in this one shot. I'm not gonna lie. She is very good. <laughs> I'm not just beauty, I'm just like Angel. I'm looking at my wings like these you know eh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> um so are you guys going up the ladders? What are you doing? Which I'm going on my own because I can fly. What did everybody just say? <laughs> I said, uh, I, I, asked, I said, please God, kill me. God damn it, one at a time! <laughs> I said, please God, kill me. <laughs> I asked which door we should take. I'm going to fly up to the open one, the one that the lock dropped off, and try they're to... They're not open. The they're, they're both unlocked. Both of the trap doors are unlocked and accessible. Right. But are you trying to are split open. the party right now, shop? No. No. <laughs> There's only yeah. one place they can go. Which is up. Yeah. But to the roof. Going D and D, that's bullshit. <laughs> I am not tricking you. This is a straightforward option for you to go up to the roof. 
All right, I'm trying to build a paranoia. I see what you're doing. Hold on. It seems like it's the roof. <laughs> yeah, you would know from the amount of movement you've had. So next place up is the roof where the ritual is going on. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Wait. No. No. Karen's going to be like, how many people are up there? Right now, it would be so fitting. Karen's going to go meet the manager and freeze his ass because I'm going to use Kona Cold on their bitches. <laughs> Karen, shut up for a second. Bramble, you were saying. Yeah, Bramble's just going to kind of like ignore everything else that's going on as soon as they're unlocked and all of their bickering as to like what's, the, what's our next plan. And he's just going to like go right straight up. Oh, you're just going straight up? Yeah, straight up. Okay. Straight up, brother. Uh, <laughs> the northeast or the southwest? Which one are you going up? Um, from my clairvoyance earlier, which one would he, which one is closer and further away from where the halfling was? Uh, the southwest is the furthest from the halfling. The northwest would be the closer one. Or so, okay. southeast, sorry. Okay, he's going to go up the one that's closer. Okay, so the northwest. Yep. Okay, I'm going to give you guys the roof map. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I'm going to go up the opposite one that he took. Okay, so... <laughs> drunk, you're going up the southeast. That's the roof map. Uh, you guys can use the uh, grid coordinates to tell me your movements, okay? Okay. Okay, so I just went up A1. Yeah, you are, uh, just for convenience of people coming up, I set you on A2. And okay. Drunk, you are on uh, duh, 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 H9. Okay, where is okay. the halfling? The halfling is no longer visible to you. And the red alchemical symbol you saw is burned into the ceiling of or the, the floor of this roof. Around you, the okay. two of you see the three dread warriors and the death lock. And above you, you see that the lightning is no longer happening, but the clouds are still there. Hmm. <clears throat> um the other okay. three, are you guys staying below? No, I'm going I'm up. Go back to Bram yeah. I'm, I'm going to go up around where Bramble is. Okay, so you're coming up. Uh, I'll put you on A... Or no, Bramble, you're on B2. Uh, Dono, you're on A2. And there is a Deathlock yeah. White directly in front of you. Alright. Um, I'll climb up as well. Are they, are they hostile? Uh... <laughs> Give me one second. <laughs> well, hold on. Because I already know what my first move is going to be fucking what it is. If, right. if, uh, let Bramble me, have let seen me this? Hold, hold on, please, because Shiny, you were saying, where are you coming up? Uh, I want to end up at, like, B2 or B1. B1? Yeah. Shit. Okay, uh, Snap. I would like to end up at H9, please. H9, okay. Roll initiative for me. Motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Bramble, uh, uh, go up, be the first one up there because Char Monster doesn't give them advantage if we're not fucking fighting them. No, no, no. You're just rolling initiative so we can have this organized. Damn it. So take That's a damn breath. First. Um, I got a two. Plus, plus your initiative. Four. Four. I got a five, motherfucker. Okay, I will, guys. Don't don't have to don't yell them out. I will I, do the thing. So hold on a second. A second. I gotta roll five, four five, fucking five. initiatives. Okay. Dread Warrior one. Uh, I like how you said Dread Warrior. That's literally their name. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, Karen's going to go kick some ass right now. <laughs> she a bad bitch. You can't kill me. Okay. Dread Warrior 2. 
Oh, that was close. Dread Warrior 3. And the other and then the Deathlock White. Which is okay. So twenty to twenty-five. Anybody roll twenty to twenty-five on initiative? Obviously not. Fifteen to twenty. Eighteen. Eighteen. You both rolled eighteen. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your dex? And whoever has the highest dex goes first. I have plus three, but I also have alert. And okay. plus three as well. <laughs> so uh, because of alert, Bramble will go first, then shiny. Uh, Fifteen to ten. Ten to five? Four, five. Five. Six. Okay, so Karen got five and Sylphan got six. Yep. And I got four. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sylphan got a five. Karen got a six? Or no, Sylpharon got six, Karen got five, right? Yep. Yep. Karen, five. <laughs> and... Don't you just love saying my name? <laughs> <laughs> I worked retail long enough. And then Ekthos <laughs> got four. Um, okay. So, Bramble, um, I'm going to have you guys come up the ladders as your initiative comes up, okay? Cool. So, Bramble, you are the first to reach the top of the ladder. What do you want to do? Okay. Where are the uh, warrior things? All right. Let me pull up my reference so I know I'm giving the right coordinates. The Deathlock White is at A3. Okay. Dread Warrior 1 is at D9. Dread Warrior 2 is at G1. And Dread Warrior 3 is at I-6. Okay. So uh, Bramble is going to go to, it looks like D or E-2, whichever one keeps me within uh, 30 feet of uh, two of them at least. Um, uh, either. Okay. Uh, then D2, please. And right. then... Are you uh, going to go to R2 as well? One more time? Are you going to go to R2 as well? Uh, no. <laughs> I heard, uh, I, I I heard Snap banging on, on something. Uh, <laughs> I do appreciate the pun. Um, however, right. he, will, he will reach both of his hands out to either one, uh, kind of slowly glancing back and forth between them and say, um... We are simply here to figure out what's going on, casting, or, um, um, here for no ill will, be our friends, and he will cast a charm monster at 5th level on both of them. They need to make a wisdom saving throw of 16. Okay. The Deathlock White matches. So that's a pass. And the Dread Warrior number two also passes. God damn it. Uh, so that's your action. Yep. Um, I don't actually really think I have anything else for bonus actions. Okay. Um, so. Shiny. Uh, you are the next person up. You are at B1. All right. Um, let me check here. I'm going to go ahead and look at the... Yes, 
That's the death ray at D2. That's closest to yes. me. And I'm going to go ahead and cast Sacred Flame on him. Okay. Do we have music? Uh, no. The jukebox thing is completely broken. Um, I tested Fuck. it last night. It's just not working. God damn it. Oh, well. Someone beatbox. I need to. Let's, do... Let's see. Sacred Flame. I don't know a little bit. I'm going to succeed on a dexterity saving throw, and my spell save DC is... Okay, so yeah, it's a dex save for the Deathlock White. 16. He fails. And you are level 10, so that's 2d8 damage. Uh, roll for that. Hates me. I'm, I'm convinced it hates me. All right, it's five. Okay. And I'm, I'm going, going to go ahead and cast an easy turn. Because I got nothing else I want to do right now. Okay. Give me one sec. You tell I play Magic the Gathering a lot. <laughs> This is all shit I should have done before. Sorry for the delay, guys. That's okay. I knew there was stuff I forgot. Okay. Um, so that's five damage on the Deathlock. Uh, that brings us to uh, Dread Warrior number one, who is going to turn... He's going to step... Or no, he's actually just going to turn around and he's going to throw a javelin at you, Wendy. Ooh. All right. They're not friendly! That's a 12. <laughs> Misses AC 16. All righty. And he is going to throw a second javelin as his second attack. And that also misses. Um... Next is Dread Warrior 3, who is also going to throw. That misses. That misses. Oh my god, Undead can't hit for shit. Um, and then that brings <laughs> us to Silpharin. As you come up, you are at. Uh, what number did I say? Um, ooh. Uh, 9H, H9. Okay, so I'm up. So where are these things at, and how evil do they look? They are undead. So uh, evil. Roll, actually, roll a perception check for me. And then I will list uh, their locations. 14. Um... You actually kind of recognize the rotted faces of these. Uh, uh, these are a an adventuring party that you remember uh, because they were rejected from the guild, which is a very rare occurrence. Especially for us. And obviously, we have got in, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. You gotta love it when the story starts. You're not the best. <laughs> And then, oh, there's even worse people that we're fighting. Cool. <laughs> um, Makes me feel a little bit better about myself. I know. Yeah. I, I thought I put time and effort into the character. Apparently, no. And I'm just putting this in for their starting positions to make it a little easier for you guys. Which is... B, C, D, G, G, 1... And then Dread Warrior. Uh, what are you doing, Sylph? <laughs> okay, you, I'm going to. I'm going to move up to engage. There's the three locations. So the closest to you are Dread Warrior one and three. I'm going to move to engage Dread Warrior 1. I'm going to attack him with my greatsword. 
Okay. Roll to hit. Give me just a second. I gotta look up the rolls on this. No worries. And uh, let's see. Karen, you're going to be on deck, so be thinking about what you're going to do once you... Oh, I already know. <laughs> okay, she didn't write my plus down for this, so it's uh, strength and proficiency bonus, or I don't remember for... Yeah. Uh, it's strength and proficiency for Greatsword. That, that just hits. I'm going to use both my attacks. I'm going to roll both of my second attack real quick. Yep, so go ahead and roll the second. Critical that one fail. fails. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four. All right. Uh, uh, actually, roll me a d4. I'll have you... Because I, I treat uh, critical fails on melee attacks specific. All right, so that's 12 damage against uh, Dread Warrior 1. <laughs> Roll a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> 14. Okay. Uh, you almost lose your greatsword over the side of the tower. <clears throat> well, that's okay. Um, I have other weapons. Yeah. Just to explain to you guys what I... Uh, how on attack, I'll have you roll a, D1, a D4. Those are uh, the four cardinal directions, and if there's something in that direction other than the target you were hitting, you might hit it. Otherwise, you might lose your weapon out of your hand if you fail a dex save. That makes sense? Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, did you have anything for your bonus action? Yes, give me just a second. I should have done this before, but I guess I'll go ahead and use it now. Uh, my vow of uh, enmity as a bonus action. I enter a vow against the enemy creature within 10 feet, and I gain advantage on attack rolls against this creature for one minute. Okay, so going forward against uh, Dread Warrior 1, you'll have advantage. Yes, sir. Okay, and Karen, you are up. You are in A2. All right, so I'm going to cast Cone of Cold, use a sorcery point to make it so it doesn't hit as many um, as I choose to my uh, charisma modifier, which is four, which I believe there's four individuals on the roof that are my um, party, right? Well, let me take a look. Cold 64. Foot cone. Which would be 120 with my sniper. With my smell my spell sniper. Yeah, I'm just I'm counting. Um so are you casting it at the Deathlock White directly in front of you? What I'm casting it at everything on the fucking roof. You can't. <laughs> it's unless a cone of cold. Stand, unless you are standing on the trap door, because it has to come out of your hand. Whatever direction you are facing, that's the direction it's cast in. Okay, so... There's a Deathlock White directly in front of you, then the Dread Warrior to your left, and then diagonally from the trap door, there's the other two. So you can hit... Um, I think you'll be able to hit essentially two, no matter what direction you're facing it. Just which ones are you wanting to hit? It does a... So, because of my spell sniping... It's a 120-foot no, cone. Yeah, 120-foot cone. So okay. it, it's... Uh, are you going for the Deathlock directly in front of you? Because then, essentially, it'll go a diagonal line from you out as the cone. You'll encompass mm -hmm. the Dread Warrior 1 and the Deathlock. Or you can kind of aim it and you can hit Deathlock, Dread Warrior 1, and Dread Warrior 3. Or you can hit the death, uh, the Dread Warrior 2, Dread Warrior 3. 
or just uh, Dread Three and Dread One? Uh, I'll just hit the one in front of me and the other one. They okay. have to make Constitution saves. Yeah, and then uh, because of your ability, it's just going around Monk's character. Yeah, like I'm saves. gonna make it so he doesn't have to. So by so I've used one sorcery point now. Okay. Uh, yes, con saves. Uh, just tell me what you roll. So the de death white rolls a 10. I'm guessing that's a fail. Or no, yep. uh, 11, okay, sorry. That's a fail, still. Okay. And then the dread warrior rolls a 21. That'll make it. Uh, I think um, it just is so, half damage, right? Uh, yeah, uh, but I also get to add my charisma modifier to the damage. On top of it, yeah. because it is a specialty to my draconic bloodline. Go ahead so and roll I get damage. To roll roll I damage. Let me see and what the damage is. 8d8. Yeah, so roll damage. So 8d8 and plus and then, uh, 4. Ekthos, you're next up after this, so be ready. 38 points of damage. 38. And then half, too. Okay. And then that's 19 to the Dread Warrior. And then I should have a bonus action to cast a spell because I have Warcaster. Yeah. So let me see here. Try to see. Because Sorcery Point doesn't that's take nice. your bonus action to. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's just it's simultaneously within casting a spell, you're able to use a sorcery point. It's pretty okay, cool. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which one of my cantrips I want to use. I have Firebolt, Chill Touch, Friend, Vicious Mockery, Shocking Grasp. You said grasp. with Warcaster? Yeah. Do I not get... I'm, I'm just taking a look at it. I'm not seeing it. No, it's an uh, attack of opportunity. My bad. But okay. I should get a bonus action. Yeah, you have a but bonus action know. to use. Uh, so if you have a spell, you can cast as a bonus. I don't know which ones are. Um, is chromatic or fucking hell, man? I didn't think about that. Oh, well, that's my turn. Sorry, I'm taking up too much time. Right. That's no my worries, turn. No worries. Um, okay, All so right. snap, Ekthos, you are next. Um, All right. Is is Karen standing on the trap door, or like? Am no. I uh, are you coming up? I thought you were coming up the door by Drunken Monk. Uh, I was doing the one by Bumble. I, I was talking to Snap. Uh, I was. Oh. I wanted to come up on the one bottom right. So like H. Bottom bottom right is uh, the H nine is uh, the one by Drunk. Okay, sorry, my bad. So, so you're on uh, you're on I uh, I nine. Okay. Uh, and then okay. um, really quick. <laughs> Just because he he did the damage, uh, as Karen raises her hand, and I'm going to put some characterization in here, Donald. I apologize, but Go raises her hand and screams, "I want to speak to your manager." The Deathlock <laughs> White hardens to solid ice, and then a wind <laughs> blows, and it turns to powder, blowing away. The Dread Warrior, one of its arms goes solid ice and then breaks off so it no longer has its shield but still has its great axe uh, and battle axe in hand. And that's how a bitch gets shit done. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and then uh, Snap, your turn. Uh, are there any pillars or columns or like raised surfaces around the roof or is it just like a flat rooftop? It's a flat rooftop around the outer edge. There is about a five foot, uh, four and a half to five foot parapet with uh, arrow slits in it. Alright. Um, can I fly up onto the uh, parapet? Just like you could uh, just climb onto it. it. It's it's five feet of movement. So wait, I'll take that. Um, and then I would like to use my. Uh, what is it? So essentially, where where the numbers and letters are on that map is where the parapet is. <laughs> awesome. I'm standing on the number eight because eight's awesome. Um, I would like to use uh, mold earth right at the center of the uh, pentagram, and I'd like to cause a relief 
of a hand flipping the bird to emerge up out of the center, um, disrupting. So the I will tell you, mold earth does not work on quarried stone. It only works on natural stone and dirt. Well, there goes that idea. <clears throat> I'm not going to do that then. Uh, it's it's a personal favorite spell of mine, as windy well. Okay. I wanted to earth bend the thing. Okay, so no, I'm not going to do that. All right, let's try this then. Um, I'm going to cast dispel magic on the sigil. sigil. Dono, your cat. I he's know. Fine, he's I'm fine. Trying to get um, <laughs> so snap. The sigil is no longer glowing. The the uh, alchemical pentacle in the center is actually literally just burned into the yeah. stone. Um, roll me a perception check, really quick. Sure. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're good. Yeah, you're fine. D twenty. <laughs> oh my god, drunk. <laughs> 12 plus. Oh, you're just now saying the uh, the uh, general No, the ice ice baby and uh, so cold. <laughs> uh, 17 perception, 12 plus 5. Um, at the very center of the sigil, it would appear that the stone that was there has been blasted outward um, at the very center of this sigil. Okay. As though something broke through the top. Awesome sauce. All right. Uh, so, not casting dispel magic. Let's. Uh... Wow, I feel like I just haven't been paying attention. I'm so sorry. Uh, I would like to cast summon greater demon. Okay. Uh, I will have to find a token. Fuck for you. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting all of my fun exploded. things were creative. So you know <laughs> oh no, you're you're fine. You're fine. Uh, let's see. Tell me what you're getting, and then I'm just going down something uh, on my. I'm I'm using roll twenty to track all of this. Uh, I would like to summon Balgra. A Balgra. Ape thing. <laughs> yes, I love it. And if uh, as close I'm going to, to use a dire badger for it, where are you putting it? Um, the Deathlock White is he dead yet? Or he's dead. He as you came up the ladder, you saw him turn to icy dust as the wind blew him away. All right, um, I'm gonna drop him right in the middle. Um, okay. Of, actually, no. Right on top can of I, the sigil. Can I actually put him as close to Death Warrior One as I can? Yeah. Um. So he is. Uh. Drunk, you are at uh, what is it? A, B, C, D, E nine. So he will be at D eight. Okay, awesome. Uh, and for my first command, to him as he emerges from the the swirling ether, um, I command him to tell me his name, his true name. I have. Give me a second. I have to grab the book. <laughs> <laughs> you broke him. It's a little bit. I wasn't expecting to need it. If you had just let me done the earthbending middle finger, it would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also have to roll initiative for my demon. Uh, let's see one second. I'm just going to tell you, Sephirin is going to be really pissed if you steal her kill against an evil creature. I won't be stealing it. Whatever this Belgora's name is, is going to be stealing it. Yes, but I know you summoned it. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> and it's an evil creature. Again. I am trying to uh, figure out where that, what fucking book this is from. Uh, Xanthar's Guide to Everything, page 166. Thank you. Be right back. D&D &D Beyond, yes, folks. No. He, <laughs> he gives the exact page reference. Subscribe to Adventures in Initiative on Twitch and YouTube. On Twitch, it's Adventures underscore and underscore Initiative. On YouTube, it's just Adventures in Initiative. Thank you very much for watching the stream and listening. You and there all beautiful you didn't people. Mean the spell. I meant the monster. And oh, there uh, you can listen to my page fifty six. Okay. And there you can listen to my urge for death go stronger and stronger. <laughs>
Ooh. Yeah, just a quick question for my next move. How evil is this thing that was just summoned right next to me? Uh, that's uh, the problem. I can't find it. Uh, the Bulgara is chaotic evil. Oh, what? God. What page? Where did you find this monster? 56 of the monster's manual. 56, okay. What's in the chart? Give me a sec. Let me just grab every single one of my books that are across the room. Why weren't you wearing prepared? to me. just put my favorite enemy right next to me. There it is. You should go like, hi, my name's Jeff. I'm here to uh, clean the roof for you. Why are you stabbing me? For some reason, it wasn't on the uh, under B-A-R for mine. At least I didn't see it. All right, let me check something. Uh, okay, telepathically, you hear... Fred. <laughs> Aaron, as this thing comes into existence, you look at him and go, Cousin Fred? <laughs> Karen, it's Fuck been it. too long. How are the kids? <laughs> kids um, are so, bitches, you know. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll me initiative for that, uh, for uh, that guy. I did. His initiative is five. Five. Okay, I will throw him in. So right when and... Karen's going. <laughs> uh, Karen, what's your dex? Plus three. You go first. Awesome. Bitches go okay. first. Uh, <laughs> now we're going to come around to... Oh, actually, I need to remove the death white. Uh, now it is Deathlock Warrior... Wait. Oh, I messed that up. Uh, now it is... Uh, Dread Warrior 2's turn, he's going to shamble up to Bramble. Or, yeah. Um, and he's going to swing it up the ush. So, uh, this is going to be two attacks. Chop Goblin, sorry for that. The uh, demon has 73 hit points. Oh, I, I found it in the book. You're good. Okay. Uh, Bramble, does a sick, uh, dirty 20 hit you? Uh, you know it does. No, I don't. I didn't look at your character sheet yesterday. <laughs> I told you 16 about five minutes ago. I have the memory of a duck. Uh, so both of his battle axe <laughs> attacks hit you. Quack. Uh, with a 20 and a 22. Um, okay, so where the hell are my D8s? There they are. Your D8 is right here, Chop Goblin. You're married. Uh, so that is a... When it comes to D8, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that is uh, 12 damage to you, Bramble. Okay. And that brings us back to the top of the round, which is your turn. Um, just a second. I need to do damage, because math. Uh, marked. Okay. Um, I'd like to... I'd like to cast Polymorph on him. Alrighty. Uh, what are you going to turn him into? I'm trying to think of that. Um, Fly. <laughs> no. Can you change him into another Bulgara? No, that has too high of a challenge rating. Yeah. I want to go down. I can't. I want to. Some animal that I can, like, pick up and. Turtle. Do a turtle. No. Uh, well, I have the monster <laughs> manual in front of me. So I want to turn him into a chihuahua. <gasps> Already. Uh, let me find these. Throw over the side. Out. Does Karen need to roll a charisma saving throw to not run and pick up the chihuahua? <laughs> Karen, is it just me, or do you prefer Pekingese? Uh, I prefer Pomeranians. Because she, she has a chihuahua. <laughs> she has whatever she says she has. I have a Pomeranian, and she is fat and lovable. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, uh, if there was actually just a straight stat block for a dog, that'd be great. 
Well, how about we see if it works first? Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll. I'm uh, like, or what am I rolling for him? A pretty sure. I need to find where I put it. Um, I put polymorph. Wisdom saving throw, 16. All righty. Yeah, he fails. I'm throwing the dog over the side. Okay. <laughs> Dono, um, how many d6 is it for 10 feet of fall damage? Um, so it's 1d6 for every 10 feet. Okay, so I need... Uh... And how many feet is it? Uh, it's 25 D6. I am going to roll this okay. in the dice in the dice roller because it's uh, easier. Of course. <sighs> yep. I'm I'm proud that one of my ideas finally freaking worked. 25 <laughs> D6. If it survives this, I will laugh my ass off. No kit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't survive. <laughs> you hear you hear a dog squeal just. <laughs> Awesome. So that was, uh, let's see, <laughs> that was Dread Warrior 2. You're up against the rail now, and it is dead. Uh, <laughs> Exos' bald girl looks and discusses, how could you? It was an innocent puppy. I like to <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Any sad puppy dog noises? Wow. Um, <laughs> Wendy, I'm assuming that that was your entire thing, since I let you use your bonus action to toss it off the edge. Yep. <laughs> Shiny, it's your I turn. I will okay. use it though, to start moving towards wherever another thing is. Use what and who in? Movement to move towards a thing. Okay. Uh, evil thing it is, as long as it's an evil thing. Five, so you have a total movement of 30 total, so just okay, so wherever. One, two, three, four. Uh, you are right up against the Dread Warrior 3. Cool. Like, in melee of it, so keep that in mind. Uh, yep. Shiny, it is your turn. Um, Sorry, Dread this... Warrior 3 and Dread Warrior haven't moved. <laughs> Dread Warrior... I'm sorry, which one? Dread Warrior 1 and Dread Warrior 3. I'll copy their location. Okay. Uh, in dice roller for you guys. These are the two that are still alive. And Wendy is at I5. Cool. I5. <laughs> Great highway. Except in exactly, Tacoma. Yeah. It's our fastest route to each other. Except in Tacoma. Because they never finish construction. Because I know you love me. That's a Washington joke. Okay, what are you doing, Shiny? I can't tell. Is that enough movement for me oh. with 30 feet of movement to get right in between the two? Uh, to be between the two of them? Yes. From where you're at on B1. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, yes. How far away do you want to be from each of them? I just need them within a 30-foot radius of me. Yes. Uh, you would have them, the Bulgura, win all within 30 feet of you if you move to CD. I'm going to channel divinity. Turn undead. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, you are at A, B, C, D, E, F, F6. Um, what do I need to roll for channel divinity? Uh, that is a... Let me double check. I'm pretty sure it's just a wisdom saving throw. Page 16. Wisdom saving throw. Uh, Dread Warrior 3 fails. And Dread Warrior 1 passes. Alright, so the one who failed, uh, it must spend its turns trying to move as far away from me as it can. It can't really only move to a space within 30 feet of me. It can't take reactions. For its action, it can only use the dash action to try to escape from the effect that prevents it from moving. There, if there oh. is, the creature can use the dodge action. Have it jump oh. off the roof. <laughs> you're, you're, that, that's what it's probably going to end up doing. Cause... 
<laughs> and then I'll have to roll for it on its turn. We'll see. Um, what are you doing, Stealthy? I'm out of movement. Yep, I'm good. That's what I do. That's it. Okay. Um, that brings us to Dread Warrior 1, who he didn't like losing his arm. So he's going to swing twice at Monk. Uh, does a 10 hit you? I doubt it. No, no, it does not. How about a natural 20? Well, no, I don't think that. Yes, of course I did. <laughs> okay, and that is... Uh, nine damage to you, sir. Yes? Yes, nine damage. That's kind of underwhelming. It's a battle axe, and he only has one hand, so he can't use versatile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay <Sure>. um, <laughs> that brings us to Dread Warrior 3, who I need to roll an intelligence check for. I don't have much faith in this. <laughs> Poor undead. Yeah, he's going to jump off the side. Hell yeah. <laughs> He rolled an eight to see if he knew how to get through that trap door. <laughs> so you you hear a whistling like from a bone flute and then a crunch. <laughs> go ahead and roll it. <laughs> Here we go. We know it's gonna kill him. The bald girl pulls pulls a piece of parchment out from his uh, loincloth and scrolls a number ten and holds it up above his head. <laughs> oh my That's god! That's like three times its health. Oh, it's uh, it explodes. <laughs> Snap! Uh, Ethos has a great view of this as it sees it do a perfect like swan and go into a perfect dive off the he side. He also holds up a piece of parchment with number ten. <laughs> that Funny brings us a roaring crowd. <laughs> That brings us to uh, Silpharon. I have to ask, which looks more evil to me, the uh, Dread Warrior or this uh, Vagra standing right next to me? It's also holding a piece of paper that says 10 on it. <laughs> the Balgura looks much more evil. You would know or what a fiend of the hells looks like. Um, but the Dread Warrior is actively attacking you. Well, the Balgura is not. Yes, but you just... Uh, a player just summoned uh, one of my favorite enemies right next to me. You would have fought beside them before, I will point that out. So, most likely, this is not the first time you've seen this done by... And I'm disgusted as I have been every time. I'll take my uh, two swings at the uh, Red Warrior. At the Dread Warrior, okay. That does not hit. That does not hit. 13 and a dirty 20. Yep. And there's damage. Uh, I got to... I'll be right back. Ooh. Okay, I have to roll for Undead Fortitude. Constitution saving throw, okay. All right. He passes. Okay. All right. So you guys all see... Silpharon, uh swing his great sword and break into the spine of this dread warrior. And as the top starts to teeter away and he pulls his blade back, it locks back in place and is very stiff and unmoving, but still obviously animated. Um, I need a retcon. You need to add five minutes to that. What are you using for the damage? It's my 2d6 and then my uh, my, uh, my bonus to it, which is a plus 5. Oh, 
Yeah, then it's definitely dead. But also, <laughs> you had advantage on both of those, too, I forgot. Oh, well, it, yeah, dead. I forgot it, but it doesn't matter, because he's dead. Exactly, <laughs> so that is the end of initiative. Um, um, I would turn to uh, what's his nuts who summoned this thing and say, get this thing away from me. Bye, Fred. <laughs> um, so, question. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep him around, because it says if I stop concentrating, he sticks around for 1d6 rounds, and he does whatever he wants. Yeah. Um, so, concentration is if you lose concentration. You should be able to uh, just dismiss a spell. So you just send him back where he comes from. All right. Yep, I do that. Snap my fingers. Bye, Fred. Thank you for okay. showing up. I guess. Um, <laughs> Ekthos, roll perception for me, and uh, I would say Windy and Drunk can also roll perception. I don't dismiss Fred just yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who else were you having rolled perception? Perception. Uh, uh, Farron and Bramble because of their location. Shiny, do you have um, uh, proficiency on perception? Yes, I do. And yes, you also can roll it. Oh, that's wrong. Sorry. Uh, the, that was a dirty job. Please Fifth make sure eight. you guys are rolling in the, the dice roller again. Oh, my bad. Because I can't see any of those. Uh, let's see. I so. Perception check or anything like that. These dice hates me. 15, 11, dirty 20, and a 15. I'm sorry, it was an 18. I added the 18. Wrong okay. modifier. No worries. Um, the only person that sees anything is Silpharon. In the distance, you see what appears to be two robed figures, figures flying away at high speed, their robes flapping behind them. How far away are they? They are almost out of view. Can you give me an exact number? Number. <laughs> they are beyond 400 feet and outside of any reasonable range. <laughs> All right. If you All right. really want to try and cast a spell to attack them, I will let you. But also, uh, have you found, haven't seen have... them. You haven't well, seen someone them. Someone point them the fuck out, because I've got Ice Storm, storm which has 300 feet, feet. Well, which is 600 feet with my sniper. <laughs> I'm, okay. one some, I'm going to. Five. I'm going to give you. Okay, I'm going to give you two rounds. One, <laughs> assuming uh, Silfarin is pointing them out. Yes. yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach my hand up and say they're moving away rather quickly. Okay. Karen, Karen. go ahead and cast Ice Storm. <laughs> Okay, they have to make a so a uh, hail of rock hard ice pounds and grounds the uh, the ground in twenty foot radius, four hundred foot high or forty foot high cylinder uh, centered on a point within range. Each creature in the cylinder must make a dexterity saving throw. The creature uh, takes one d eight bludgeoning damage and forty six cold damage on a fail save, or half as much damage on a successful one. Give me I'm one second. I gotta pull up the, the character. Very generous. At and I could cast it at fifth level if I wanted to do it. Oh extra no, no, don't, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> um, let me check something. At two hundred feet, <laughs> almost out of range is several thousand feet. Just gonna throw. Okay, that you're, how high of a spell level are you casting it? Um, so I can do it either at fourth or fifth. Whichever one you're casting it at, tell me. I'll probably just do it at fourth, because I've got... Okay. There. As the spell begins to form, and this column of ice begins to form, you feel a ninth level counter spell <laughs> strike back at you. And oh. see one of, the, one of the beings turn around and glare at you. Even Can at I this distance, Karen. Even <laughs> at this distance, Karen. Which you'd okay. have to have a ninth level counter spell, and then I'd roll off for you. Even at this distance, you can tell that it is a lich. Mm, dead boy, bitch. All right. 
Can I empower my spell? <laughs> to say I, fuck him? <laughs> I don't even know if empowerment would be able to counter a ninth level counter. Because mm. empowerment only brings it up one spell slot, right? One spell level? But I have nine sorcery points left. I could totally get it past it. <laughs> Do you really want to fight a lich? I will I will gladly bring him and his brother back. Uh, They're hey supposed guys, to be wanna... for the next one shot. Do you want to die? <laughs> yes. I mean... <laughs> Karen's just gonna look at everybody and like, hey, you want to fight a lich today? Um, he's going to uh, contemplate jumping off the roof and just flying to safety. Karen will let the counter spell happen. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the rest of the party's too chicken shit to do anything. Are, are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Um, being confused, Bramble is going to attempt to cast Comprehend Language to understand the stupidity of Karen's actions. Um, <laughs> let me check something. <laughs> Wisdom saving <laughs> <for> Bramble. <laughs> <laughs> What's the range on this? Oh, that's not close enough. You're lucky. You're very lucky. I know. I'm not, I'm not, not not now. You aren't. Um, as as the spell disintegrate or dis <laughs> disappears, and Karen releases the energy, the two figures continue their fast speed, flee away into the distance. That's right. Run right away, you bitches. And you all are left standing on top of the Tower of Heroes. As the clouds finally clear and the sun begins to shine down again, you hear a voice in your minds. Well, looks like clouds are clear. All of you alive? What the fuck happened? <laughs> As you hear the guild master. Is anybody going to respond? No, we, we died. Did all of the people that were on top of the roof. All right. Give me a minute. And after a moment, you are teleported back into the tavern of the guild. Rathmus holds back? out a bottle to you, Ekthos. Does Fred come with? Uh, no. By this point, you would have dispelled Fred, I'm assuming. Oh, but Fred... Fred's dead. Okay. <laughs> um, no, he's not dead. He's just back in the hells. Uh, you are all standing again in the tavern of the guild. The guild master is standing in front of you. A surprised and pleased smile on his face. Well, I guess you aren't all a bunch of fuck-ups, huh? So what happened out there? Did you it's stop whatever enough. ritual that was, or what? There was a chihuahua on the roof. <laughs> Thanks. What? I don't want to tell him. Exos will be big, uh, drinking heavily. <laughs> Shiny, Shiny, what are, what are, what are you what telling, him? telling him? Uh, well, how we founded the guild and everything. And yes, my predecessors. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> wasn't there something about two necromancers that they always tried to defeat? Yeah, they always had a hard time because they had tons of clone spell jars dotted around the world, so they'd kill them and think they defeated them, and then they'd pop them. They were able to trap one of the brothers in a jar and seal him away somewhere. The other one, what did they do? He became a lich, and then... Uh, and then yeah. he was put into the tower to seal him away. What happened? <laughs> um, well, you know. I tried to stop him, but nobody else wanted to fight. <laughs> I'm glad you did, because otherwise I would be dead. You'd be dead. Or we'd be dead. <laughs> You'd be dead. Um, I mean, he I think is I'm going awesome to be dead too, because liches, you know. He he is going to pick up his shield and sword, and this grizzled, bearded, gray warrior. 
this paladin is going to stand up, shake his head twice, not making eye contact with any of you, nod to Rathmus, and walk out. And it is obvious that he is heading off to inform the Council of Ankhmor, as well as to call back the most powerful warriors in the guild from the orc invasion. I think that was well. And all of you are left in the tavern as Rathmus puts out a selection of ales and liquors and wines and casts illusion so that a certain beach chair is now surrounded by what appears to be Cabo. Fuck yeah. Karen is very happy. <laughs> and you are all alive. Unfortunately, with the knowledge that there is now a pair of ancient brothers, one a necromancer, one a lich, free in the Imdil Valley outside of Ankh. Fun! Good session, everyone. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm not kidding. If you had wanted to fight him, I'd let you, but I guarantee you would have died. Eh. Karen still had, like, almost all of her spells. <laughs> the, lich the Lich was full power. <laughs> I get that. So is Karen. <laughs> Boys. Boys. Never <laughs> underestimate a Karen! Hey, Boys, huh? you know, get, get the ruler out already. Yeah, put the away. No, I, I really I want Karen to be in the next Gosh. one. Okay, well, let's do outros. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us for this episode of Adventures and Initiative, our special one-shot Tower of Heroes. If you would like to catch us normally, we are streaming our live game on Saturdays and post the videos to YouTube on Mondays. This one-shot special will go up on Thursday on our YouTube channel, which is Adventures and Initiative. And <sighs> I have been your DM, Shop Goblin. And just wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Karen. It's Go ahead and do your outros, guys. Shit up. <laughs> uh, Wendy, will you start us off? I'm Wendy Hill, who played Bramble Boomer Bumble, and uh, I gotta go. Um, I'm I Snap Plastic, and I played Ekthos. If you're interested in seeing more Gundam and modifications to model kits and other D&D stuff, you can check me out on TikTok. Same username, I underscore Snap underscore Plastic. I am Dono the Cleric. I've been playing the one, the only, Karen. And don't ever underestimate her, because she a bad bitch. <laughs> and if you want to check me out, I'm on Instagram and TikTok as Dono the Cleric. I do DM tips and a bunch of other D&D stuff. <laughs> I'm Stealthy Stormy. I've been playing the Kenku Rogue Shiny. Um, you can catch me on TikTok doing D&D painting tips cosplay and other stuff like that same username stealthy stormy you can also catch me on instagram as stormy's rogue miniatures i do miniature convention painting as well and i am the drunken monk you can catch me on tiktok and instagram and twitter at the drunken monk and i played your high sun elf beer and moral of the story is don't place a Evil creature next to a person who favors evil creatures. <laughs> I'm sure Karen was more evil than that demon, okay? <laughs> I forgot about that. Karen is lawful evil. <laughs> well, hell, I will All right. I want to slit her throat the entire friggin' one time. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining. Have a good rest of your week, and we will see you next Saturday. <laughs>